the old friend Father Geegan. Good news is, today is part three of Into Africa, where Chief Kazulu has to fight all the rebels and save the entire country. So, let's not mess about, let's get straight into the action. Chief Kazulu has been roaming the country trying to recruit some chiefs. He's managed to recruit Chief Ibi and Chief Umburu, which are the villages to the north. Now he's just topping up his water and going to see what's going on. This is while Harry is running around collecting the map, by the way. So this is the Wharton station where Harry started, and we're going to just walk down to the south. Nothing around us of interest. So let's check the radio. Looking around Radio Hut 1, 2, 3, 4. Radio Hut 3 is near where we are. So nothing of interest in any of the radio huts apart from some poachers near number 8. So we're going to march down to the south. Again, nothing's nearby. Dr. Awar is now going to check the radio. And Radio Hut 2 has gone. Radio Hut 2 has gone. That means somebody has destroyed it, which is probably going to be rebels. So Chief Kazulu, Chief Ibi and Chief Umburu are going to go head down to the south and see if we can find the rebels and attack them. So marching down south, we've moved, moved down to the south of the hills near, just south of Kel. This is where Harry went days and days ago. Moving south, ever so often you check info because there are rebels ahead of us. You won't see rebels unless you're directly next to them. In Lords of Midnight you see an army across in the distance. Here you don't. You just see suddenly a load of um, tooled up guys. And trying to move south there's a zebra in the way. So let's move around the zebra. The rebels are two squares to the south. And there they are. And now let's fight. A short interlude to discuss how battles work. The chiefs have a stat for men. You see the magenta bar. Chief Kazulu's bar is 37mm long on my monitor. Umburu's is 21mm long. And Ibi's is 16mm long. There are the rebels. Chief Ibi's going in to attack. We turn the night button. And in the morning we have won. There's no actual update. But we've lost men. We now have 5mm of men left. Let's see what would happen if we attack with Chief Umburu. Who is stronger with 21mm. Does he lose more men? Does he lose less men? We'd think more men, you'd lose less. Let's check it out. He's got... Where is the stat gone? Move around. He has got 10 millimetres of men left. And finally, Chief Kazulu, who starts off with 37 millimetres. And after night falls, he is victorious. And has 26 millimetres left. This is measured with a ruler on my monitor. So in each case, the chiefs lose 11 millimetres no matter what. So we're now going to attack with both Chief Umburu and Chief Ibi at the same time. To see if that makes a difference. And in the morning, Chief Ibi is exactly the same at 16 millimetres. Just before the eye of his, of his name. But Chief Umburu has uh, dropped down to 10, which is the same as it was when he attacked on his own. And finally, we're going to attack with Kasulu, Umburu and Ibi. All together and see what happens. Chief Kazulu's lost men down to 26 millimeters just before the S of his name. Looking at Umburu though, you see he's exactly the same, and so is Ibi. The only the first chief in the list matters. So attacking with multiple chiefs is a waste of time, so don't do it. My name is K, Professor K, but then you already knew that. Thanks to the power of the Golden Mask of Kasulu, Chief Kasulu now has the support of all the tribes in the land. But his problems are not over. This is Kasulu. We start with Chief Kasulu in the village of Talodi. All the, all the chiefs in all the magenta villages are now supporting him. We have problems with rebels coming from the south. So, what should we do? The chief 
is going to gather his troops across the whole land, but separately in each of the radio huts marked here on the map in red. Radio Hut 2, however, is already destroyed by the rebels. So the chief is going to drive westwards and try and catch the rebels on the run. Let's see how he gets on. Chief Kazulu is in the village of Talodi. We've now given him the mask. He can recruit all the chiefs. Something to watch out for, though, is if you select Chief Melfi, the last of the chiefs. Chief Melfi is a pygmy in the village of Melfi in the upper north east of the map. This will break the game. So here I'm moving, but without actually moving. And now I'm rotating, but the compass isn't actually moving much. And it all goes a bit wrong. So I've now managed to move, and now the cursor is all over the place. So let's try and change things. Oh, that was info, but I've now, it's now wrong. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, that's the map. I can't see where the cursor is. Um, let's try and change where we are. That's night. Night still works. But now, whenever you try and do anything else, it's going to be night. So this will completely hose the game. This is why I don't actually use Chief Melfi. All the other chiefs, they're fine. Absolutely fine. Some are already dead because the rebels have killed them. But avoid using Chief Melfi. So Chief Kazulu has moved west from the village of Talodi through the jungles and has now moved across the central plains. He's now entered battle with some of his chiefs, found some rebels. Chief Rhea is in Radio Hut 4, where he has access to information and also a radio. But now I've got Chief Rhea, let's keep looking around. Are the rebels around? Let's move around. So the key thing is use the information to see what's going on. Work out where the rebels are and try and find them. The information panel is not 100% accurate. But here we see rebels are now ahead and slightly to the slightly to the south. So we're going to use the slightly clunky controls, move for the jungle, and try and find them. There they are. So he's now fighting some more rebels. Back to Chief Kazulu. The next day, we defeat the rebels. Let's go and join them. Night time. And we've obviously won the battle. It doesn't tell us anything, as you know from earlier. No rebels around. We've lost some men, though. There's more rebels to the northwest. So we keep pushing through the jungle. I've, oh, and there, that there was the burned mission hut where Father Duncan used to live. He's now dead. There are quite a few rebels ahead. So let's go. Oh, there they are on the way to the waterhole. And here's Chief Kazulu. He's still alive. On his way to fight some more. So you do this over and over. I have cut out about several hours of footage. There's more rebels in the jungle, but we don't want those ones. In this case, I'm choosing to fight these guys. Because at this point, I hadn't done the work to realise that it's only ever the first chief that fights. Again, we've, night time has fallen. We've won the battle. It tells us nothing. All we do is lose some men. So we have very few men left. So Chief Rear tots up his water supplies. Heads west now. And there are the rebels in the mountains. Off the Chief Kazulu, just the same sort of thing. I do this for all the chiefs we control, one at a time. Obviously, I cut that out because it will get very tedious. This part of the video was originally 45 minutes long. Obviously, I edit out the dull bits. Chief Beer is now dead. He's run out of men because he was the first chief. Our now top chief is now Chief Talodi. This is how it works. It's a rather strange fighting system. So Chief Ch Chain to Chief Talodi. Chief Poker was already dead by the time he got the mask. Chief Talodi is next. He's got lots of men left. Where are the rebels? None on the map. On the info map anyway. So let's see what's going on. Sometimes you have to move in order for the map to be updated. Sometimes the map is just completely imaginary. So we're now going to head west. There's a nice village along here, top of our water. So what you can't do is sit in the open, because if you do, your food and water supplies will drop each turn until they hit minimum. Then your strength drops and you can't move. But if you're camped in a village, or in this village here, the village of Buta, which is in the centre third of the map, but on the west-hand side, we're now going to wait here. Chief Kazulu joins up as well. He moves across. And this is where our base is going to be, keeping an eye out for rebels approaching over here with a number of chiefs. 
and here we're going to fight most of the war. In between, we're also checking the radio for the radio huts and also using the warden to wander around looking for any other rebels. So again, the boot of the guide is in the village of Juba, no rebels nearby. We left him here earlier in episode one. Dr. Awari is in the, radio, the warden station at the start. All the radio huts are clear, apart from Radio Hut 2, which has been destroyed. Professor Kane is in the village of Talodi, where we left Chief Gazulu. Father Duncan is already dead, his mission hut was destroyed. It's now night time for Chief Talodi, and anything, is anything happening? No rebels are nearby in the village of Buta, so let's just look around. What chief, what's this chief up to? He's, gonna, he's still heading towards a radio hut. This is radio hut number one. We'll see more of this later. We're gathering some of the chiefs there. Two chiefs and a, the bloke with the hat is the radio operator. He doesn't fight, he just sits there answering the radio. Because we're in a radio hut, we can now use that to see what's going on around the country. This slightly clunky uh, control mechanism. You only have M and N. It's now night time for Warden Smith. It's a new dawn. What's Chief Talodi up to? No rebels are nearby, which is brilliant. So we rotate, look around, just to be sure. You see here how tricky and annoying the uh, control me mechanism is. So what he's going to do now, he's going to go and check his status. And he's going to go and get some water, because he was running slightly low, low on water. Yeah, no rebels are nearby. This is all lovely. And I wait for the next day. Any rebels around, check your info. No rebels are nearby. Lovely jubbly. And we turn around, and what do we see? Rebels. So the info says there are no rebels, but the rebels to the west of me in their very smart uniforms. So the info thing is glitchy. He's now fighting. Let's see what um, any other chiefs are up, up to. Chief Amburu. Oh, and there are rebels to the south of the village. So he's going to go and fight them. All looks good. It's night time for Chief Talodi. Chief Talodi's not dead, therefore I've won, won the battle, which is nice. But his number of men has dropped. So let's go back to the village. I think at one point, I hope by staying in a village, your number of men would naturally restore. Those there were chiefs and rebels. Oh, Chief Umburu's died in battle. So let's now look around, and the rebels are still to the south. So Chief Ibi, who I believe is one of the pygmies, is going to fight them. Let's see how he gets on. And he's dead. Uh, let's try and now try Chief Muka, another, another one of the pygmies, who had lots and lots of men. Let's charge them into battle. How do we get on? Chief Lumai as well. See, there's a bug where we don't handle the sprites properly with pygmies. Chief Talodi does not have a lot of men. So what Chief Talodi is going to do is move back to his home village. The idea at this point being that maybe if you turn to your home village and wait, you'll get your men restored. No rebels, no rebels are nearby. So move through the jungle. It's now night time. Night falls in Africa. You get no sense of... Oh, and I've moved too fast into battle. Chief Muka is dead. Remember, he fought the Pygmies last turn. Chief Lumai is alive, but has lost a lot of men. Let's see if we move back to the village. There's only two of us left. That's Chief Lumai and that's Chief Kazulu. Who doesn't have a special sprite, which I find disappointing. Chief Kaya is in the mountains. He's going to move back up as well. He hasn't got a lot of men. Chief Kazoo has lots of men left, which is nice. It's night time for Dr. Awari. I'm always checking all the different chiefs. Oh, Chief Lodi is still dead. He's not come back to life. The select character select screen is very finicky. It also doesn't tell you who's dead, which gets irritating very quickly. So Chief Lumai is going to try and return to his village. Chief Kazoo still has lots of soldiers. Looking around, are the rebels nearby? Rebels to the south. Go and get them. Kazulu forever. Night time, we've won the battle, but I've lost a lot of men. This is now bad. 
So back to the village, night time, he's not restored any men. So what am I going to do now? Yeah, waiting in the village does not give you men back, but maybe going to your home village will. So Chief Kazulu is going to head back to the village of Kazulu, who's going to head east, cross the mountains, and head up to this mission hut. Also, that's a, that's a warden station, sorry. You can tell the difference because warden stations have radios. At night time, head further west, around the mountains because it's quicker. Those are the hills near the village of Kel. That's a lion. We can't move, we have to move around the lion. Coming up down to radio hut number five, which looks a bit like a helmet at distance. Chief Lumai is heading back to his village in the uh, eastern jungles. No rebels are nearby, which is nice. But there was a water buffalo. Move around here, which they are quite annoying, the animals. Night time with Chief Lumai. And there are poachers to the east. So let's go and kill them. Back to Chief Kazulu, up to Radio Hut 5. There's a, a gang of uh, chiefs there. Here are the mountains. And here is the village of Kazulu. Chief Kai is now in Buta, where the rebels to the south. Are they going to attack me eventually? Don't know. Chief Kazulu goes home and then he waits. We now wait several days in the hope that we get more men. And guess what? You don't. This is several days, you get no more men ever. Remember, kids, smoking is not cool, which is why this is an empty pipe. What's worse than smoking, though, are bushfires, which start at the far south of the map and sweep northwards. Can we stop them before the entire country turns to ash? Let's, let's go and find out. So what I'm now doing is using Professor Kane, who has a jeep, to move around looking for rebels. So he's in the village of Talodi, heads, west, heads south, and what do we see over to the south? West, southeast even. A mysterious, bizarre cloud thing. What might that be? Well, I don't see it on the info, because that, my good friends, is a fire. And it's moved further north. The village is now destroyed. That was the village of... I can't remember what it was now. Um, further south village. It's now destroyed. But this hut is available. And there is a fire just to the south. So Professor Kane is going to think, OK, can I fight the fires? You can't move into the fire. It doesn't let you. Fires only exist on the plains. You can't move into them, as I said. And they don't move into the jungle. So move slightly west. Their fire is directly ahead of me. Apparently fires are dangerous. You don't see them on the map. You only see them... I'm now walking. You only see them um, on the radio display. So I'm not dead, but I'm now in the middle of a fire. To the north is some scrubland. Which is not burned yet. There it is. So what's going to happen to that? Oh, there's a zebra. So the idea is, can we fight the fires? Apparently, in the plains, you can fight them. Oh, the scrublands have now been burned. And the zebra is now in within the flames. It's probably dead as well. So it says, fighting the fires on the grasslands is possible. But I've just tried, it didn't work. But anywhere else is dangerous, you might die. So oh, for safety's sake, Professor Kane is going to move up to the village of Talodi in due course. She so flicks around. That's the burnt mission hut. So you can't get any more petrol. And his jeep has gone. He left his jeep for safety. It is now gone. So fire destroys jeeps. Good news is they're in the hills. Should be nice and safe. We're north of a water hole. Water stops fires, doesn't it? So let's stay in the, vi in, let's stay in the village of Talodi and keep an eye out for flames. There's flames to the south. I'm sure we'll all be fine. See, fire's not to the south. We should avoid us. So night has fallen, a new day, the fire has moved slightly further north, but again it isn't through the hills, so that should be nice and fine. It's moving slightly up, so that's fine. And suddenly the fire has moved out of the hills and is now due south of us. It actually, there's a line of information where the fire is, 
and he just keeps moving north and it destroys everything it touches. So radio huts, mission huts, villages, water holes. And water holes are the only real place you can top up your water and they don't stop fires. This is a bit of an issue. So we're now trying to get ahead of the water. Look at Nabutu. He's in Radio Hut 1 with a big red line of fire four days to the south. Because the fires move north one square at a time, only one day at a time. So this is a bit of an issue. Radio Hut 1 is the furthest south. We we'll check out all the Radio Huts. The rest of them all seem fine, which is good. So let's look around, see what Harry Smith's up to. He's now further south of the fire, looking north to the complete line of flames and smoke. There is a back to the chief. Now, we're going to try and fight the fire with actual chiefs. My logic being, well, Professor K was a bloke on his own, whereas the chiefs have small armies of men with them. So, logically speaking, a small army of men, especially at a water hole, should be able to put out a fire by chucking water on it. There is logic to this. Let's see how we get on with that using logic on this game where you can't move past it you, you can't where zebras block movement so we're going to try and form a line of chiefs to try and save radio hut number one and let's see what happens night falls in africa no mention of time so harry looks around the control method is not great you get two oh fire is still burning to the north can i get behind the fire no, you can't. The jeep is destroyed. No more petrol anyway. The chief Ippy is now in burnt scrubland. So we now look around. The water hole is destroyed. The water hole did not stop the fire. Neither did the presence of the chiefs. But nobody's dead. So fire doesn't fire doesn't kill you, which is um interesting. But fire does destroy everything, which is not so good. Can we desperately stop the fire? What if we combine the chiefs? That's maybe maybe we're bad luck. Maybe we can try again. Is it gonna is it gonna help? Is it gonna help? We hope it's gonna help because there's a whole country that's gonna burn otherwise. So Nabuti's in the guide. Radio is the red line. The pink chiefs have got two of them to the south of me. Can they stop the fire? Can they stop the fire? A day's gone by, the fire's got closer, they cannot stop the fire. Again, another day, one step closer. And finally, Radio Hut 1 is destroyed, but we can still use the radio, which is a slightly bizarre bug. We've now skipped forward many days. This is Chief Ambura, who's up in Radio Hut 7, in the far north of the map. And we can see that the fires are going closer and closer. We are unable to stop the fires. So what happens when the fires get to the top of the map? So the fires get closer and closer. So Chief is going to try and keep ahead of the fires. We're now going to move north. So the far edge of the map, that's the northern mountains. You can't get any further than that. Or oh, there's a poacher. We'll take him out. Bomb, he's dead. No update on how that works. You can't go closer. Any further, sorry. So now we wait. Chief Kazulu is currently waiting in his village. Night falls in Africa. Everything seems fine. Everything seems fine. Before suddenly, the fires get closer and closer, and they are unstoppable. The world is burning around our ears. The fires now there destroy the scrubland. Let's look around. Complete line of fire to the west. And Chief Kazulu in his, is in his village, which is burnt. There's a burnt water hole, burnt village. He's got no food. He's got no water. This is not good. Basically, the whole country is now going to starve and die first. So I go back to Chief Ambura. The fire is now in the very last square. Back to Chief Kazulu. And I wait. Now the fire should have now gone off the top of the map. Yeah, it's all gone. Back to Chief Kazulu and we're going to go night time. What happens next? We'll shock you. 
and defeated the rebels. You have united the tribes. We've won. There is a bug on the screen. A bug on the winning screen. Oh dear. So that was Into Africa. It's an interesting game. There's a lot of promise there. Good things. The graphics are nice. It's an interesting story. The food and drink mechanic I quite like. You can't just leave armies standing in a desert. They'll get weaker and weaker. Same with characters. I like the inclusion of jeeps and petrol so you get faster movement but at the price of having to avoid certain terrain. The wild animal motif was interesting. You don't just go hunting them like some sort of a big game poacher. So animal conservation, points for that. There are some issues with it though. You don't get a lot of feedback during the game. So when you fight a poacher, you're not told you've won. You just are still alive. When you fight an actual battle, again, you win or you die. It doesn't tell you how well you did. The actual battle mechanic is weird in that only the topmost chief does the fighting in the, in the order of the list. I think sometimes there are more than one rebel on a square, so you move a chief in with lots of soldiers and he just dies anyway. The first time I tried winning a battle, I moved three chiefs, Chief Kazulu, and Buru and Ippi, in, Ibi, into a battle with one rebel, and they all died, which suggests there are multiple rebels there. When you play the game, there's no sense of time, really. Uh, it doesn't tell you how many days have passed, just night falls. So you don't get any sense of, you know, r rushing against time. The rebels at the south of the map, which we saw when Harry went treasure hunting, they don't move for a very long time. I sent Harry down to look at them, and they didn't move for 40 days. It's quite hard to get anybody killed. If you attack the rebels, they will kill you. I tried to attack a poacher with Father Duncan, who was starving to death, dying of thirst, minimum strength, and an elderly priest still managed to win. I then tried, out of curiosity, some sequence breaking. So I had a save state where Harry had found nine pieces of the map, where it had taken a very long time to do so, so long that the fires had started, and the fires start around day 205, if you're playing. He then went and found the tenth piece of the map, then went and found the mask, which was still there. I went to see Chief Kazulu, who was in his village still, which had been destroyed. He gave the mask to the chief. The chief was then instantly recruitable, as were all the rest of the chiefs. Chief Kazulu could not move. His strength was actually below the minimum. It was actually zero, so it was permanently night. But you could control him and see what was going on. I then thought, OK, maybe I'll go, I can cure him now with the doctor. And as the doctor was moving south, she spotted the fires approaching. I followed the fires to the north of the map to see what would happen. And once you get to the top of the map, the fires move off the top of the screen and you get the victory screen. You don't need to actually fight any rebels. You don't need to cure the chief. All you need to do to win is for Harry to find the map, find the mask, give the mask to the chief, and then wait long enough. At which point I thought, yeah, you know what? Thank you for watching.